Hey there, welcome everyone guys. This is Ice Group. I'm Shambo and I'm back with another dancing line in Unity tutorial. Well, before I go into the main topic, I will right now announce the winners of our giveaway. Well, I already drew the winners yesterday, but I had a system failure and the video got deleted, so there's nothing I can do but show you who are the winners once again. This is Gleam that I have the giveaway still running has got two hours left i will check out who are the winners whom i drew yesterday so these three people are the winner kevin zapata gets, gets time of the day david jackson gets realistic water pack and anthony gets style in town well, i will send you the mail with the links to these assets and I will request you please do not share the links please well so right now let's get in the topic so before going into today's topic I will first of all debug yesterday's video and also do a few requests well not yesterday's video last video I mean so in the last video what happened was the music started right away even before you we tapped to start so here's how we are going to start the music only when we tap there are various ways we can use audio source variables and variable dot play functions to play it but i tried it it was not working i don't know why so i will show you another method so for i will i'm going to create a child object of the main camera Let's create an empty child object. Let's name it music. Let's add a component of audio source. Okay, so audio clip would be anything is fine. Let's take the polygon bay. Okay, so we'll not. Uh, so now we are going to deactivate this game object. Okay, so now we're going to edit up the cube movement script a bit so i've got this opened up already in the visual studio i will add a new very game object variable so let's go public game object music okay so now we're going to start it as soon as there is a okay so what's this okay let's leave it Okay, so now we're going to make it active as soon as we click. So we're going to make it active over here inside if input dot get mouse button down zero. Let's make it music dot game object dot set active true. And this will start the music only when we click. So let's check it out but first we will need to change we'll need to put this thing okay so uh, wait a sec okay so here we need to put this music game object let's check it now so we are not having any music right now let's tap so it has started but what happens if we die? Let's check it out. The music still continuing. We need to stop the music when we die. So here's what we need to do. We'll add up another line of code. That's when it's collision and it's die. Let's write music the game object dot set active false this is going to stop the music as soon as the cube dies let's check it out the music stopped that's great it's working so now heading on to animations 
animating different objects. This was already covered by my friend Honor Roy Chaudhuri in, in the second video of our series. He used Vector3.lurp to move objects. I will show you how you can use animator and animations to move objects. Okay, so let's start. We will animate this piece of cube to go down as this line comes up near it. So first of all, we need an object that will trigger the animation. For that, we will need another cube. So let's create a new 3D object, a cube. So let's change it. It's 55, 0 0.5 and 21. So let's bring it nearby. 55, 0 0.5. Okay, and it's somewhere in the right position. Let's bring it over here. Good. So now I will not render its mesh so that we don't see it inside in the game view. So let's give it a simple tag. Let's name it trigger. Now for this cube. For this trigger. We need the cube to pass right through it and it should act as a trigger. That's why it has a box collider. I will just simply add the is trigger. Now this is a trigger and the cube will simply pass through it, causing this to animate. But for that we will need another script too. But first, let's animate this cube. Let's create a new folder called animations. Okay, we got a new folder. Let's click this cube. Let's go to animation. Let's create a new animator and animation. Let's get an animation. Down. Anim. So we've got animation right now. The animation runs from this length to this length. That's 0 0.5 seconds. No, that's a second. Complete second. Now we need to check out. We need to pull it down over at this place near the end. So let's click over here. Pulling it down right this won't work. We need to add a property that's a transform property, a position. Now at this point, I need the position y to be changed to 2 down. Okay, that's right. let's play this thing. So this is going down fine. Good, but let's stop it right now. Okay. So we have the animator animation ready. Now, how do we run this animation? We need to check out the animator too. Here's the animator controller. Here's the animation. As you can see, this there is this is the entry state. And this is the animation state, and this is the default state. So everything the animation runs, the state makes a transition from entry to down anim. Now, as we can see, it's hit the loop time is checked. This means that the transition or the state will shift from entry to down anim back to entry again to down anim repeatedly. So we'll stop this because we want the animation to occur only once. Now as this trans click on this transition is a default entry transition can and it's not previewable so we cannot edit it so it will happen automatically the trans the shift from entry state to down anim state will take place automatically but we don't want it we want to happen only when the line passes to the trigger okay so now so for that we will create a new state create an empty state okay we will make this the default state so and we will create a transition from here by right clicking on it make transition to the to down anim so now the default state will be this one so whatever be the the animation will change its state from entry to new state but there is no animation in new state so nothing is going to happen but now we can edit this state but how to add conditions we need parameters for that we will need to add a parameter there are four different types of parameter trigger bool int float i will use a boolean parameter that simply makes the parameter true or false if i check this true 
So I will need to make this thing, make this false for the transition to take place. How? Let's not make it true. Let's keep it false. Let's add a trans. Now only one condition is available over here. So the condition by default comes up over here to down. Because, but if you have multiple conditions, you can check it from here by clicking on this arrow. So when the condition is true, the transition takes place. So now we have the animator ready to. We need to make and you need to make sure that you name this parameter and remember it as it is. We will need it as it is. And we will need a new script. So let's go to the scripts and create a new script. C sharp script got it. Animated objects. We will open it up in Visual Studio. Let's reload it and it should come up and here we have it animated objects let's click on it we don't need the start and update method let's delete them we need to create a public animator anim now we are attaching this to a collider so we will need to check when it is entering the collider, when the cube is entering the collider, so what on or you can say it's we're entering the trigger. So on trigger enter. So as soon as I hit enter, everything's ready. Private void on trigger enter. Collider other. What's the meaning of this collider other now? This thing will check what is this other game object. Other game object is the one that is going to collide with the trigger now we will need to add one if statement over here if other dot tag equal to equal to player then we're going to go for different conditions why I am checking this other game objects tag as a player or not because it can happen there is no surety that it will never happen. There are chances that it can happen that a different game object passes through the trigger. If this happens, then also the animation will run. That's why I'm checking that whatever game object passes through the tr through the trigger should be the player object. If it's tagged as if it is tagged as player, then only the animation will run. Means the statements will be executed. How do I run the animation? I need to change the down Par parameter to true. How do I do it? Let's see. Anim. That's this name. Dot set bool. Inside parenthesis, I need to add down. Sorry. This should be within quotes. Down. Comma. True. Let's hit the semicolon and we're done. Now when this tag object is player, the down becomes true and we have an animation kind of ready. Let's save this script. Let's head back to Unity. Let's wait for this script to take place. Now we will attach this script to the trigger. So let's add attach this script. Animated. Okay, so the script's compilation. Animated objects. So I need to add the animator. Let's click over We have only one animated object over here. That's the cube. Let's select it. Then we're pretty much good to go. But first, we need to make sure that the player object is tagged as player. It's good. Let's check whether this is working. And if it doesn't work, we will just check out. We will just debug this thing. I'm no pro coder. I'm just trying it. And it works fine. As you can see, the animation occurred. As soon as it went through the trigger, the animator parameter became true. And here it is. Let's check it out once again. And the animation is taking place. This is how you do animations. So that was pretty much what we need, needed to do in this episode. Okay, you can use this animation for various different things. You can use the same technique for animating the camera and change the camera path. So and give your camera a dynamic effect. Okay. 
If you got money in your pocket, I will tell you that you can use camera path animator for cutscenes or cinema director suit to animate camera paths. That will give you fantastic looking results. Or else, you can simply make an animator for a camera and let the camera go on a dynamic. Well, that's all for today's video. If you've been this far into the video, don't forget to leave well, subscribe, subscribe to this channel, leave a like, and share this with your friends. So, and thanks for watching this video. And in the next video, I will show you how you can create a checkpoint system in the assembly. I know that will be very important because even the fan made levels don't have a checkpoint system. I'm going to show you right that. The video will come out maybe next week or maybe the week after that. Well, once again. Thanks for watching. Keep playing isolation media's games and keep being cool. Thanks.